Hello Lava friends, I have another Lava gem that you need to know more about which is pipelines. I'm sure you have already heard the term but have you used it yourself? Let me tell you all that you need to know about pipelines in Lava. Alright, pipelines in PHP and Lava, where do we start? Before I want to show you what it's like in PHP and Lava, here's the first time that I saw the pipeline pattern. So if you remember this here, Galp, you are officially old. I'm very sorry. So this was a task manager, task runner before Webpack, before Veed. And yeah, you used it to modify some of your style and JavaScript files. So here we have the initial file here, which was a SAS file. And then you piped it through those different pipes here. And let's make it CSS, let's minify CSS, let's create a file and then let's put the file somewhere. So this is a good example of the pipeline pattern where you have this initial, initial value and then you put it through different steps here. And yeah, you already see one of the main advantages here is that you immediately see what is the input and what am I doing here. And those pipes here are steps that you can easily remove this step or remove this or add another one and this is where the pipeline pattern really shines. Okay, but back here in PHP, I want to use this now here in Tinkerwell. I'm creating this new comment saying, hey you, with a smiley. And now let's imagine this is a comment that you maybe have on your blog post or maybe on a kind of forum. And now we at the back end, we want to modify this a little bit so that we get back off some spaces here at the beginning. Maybe let's um, use a real emoji here. So we want to run some specific actions on this initial data. And this is again where the pipeline pattern really shines. So we need the facade and we can send something in the pipeline, which is our commands. All right, and next we want to send it through our pipes here. And this is an array of, yeah, some dedicated actions that we want to run here. And what we can do is we can run here closure and the first thing is that we get here is our initial data. And the second thing is next, which is kind of the next task that we need to trigger, similar to what you would do in a middleware and level. Okay, let's try to get rid of the spaces here at the beginning. We can use the trim function here in level, very easy. And then we need to return the next step and we're providing now the modified comment here. And then here at the end, we need to return this. I think it's, what is it, then return. Yeah, so we're running everything and then we're returning it here immediately. And we should get back our string. Yes, we do, but without the spaces at the beginning and at the end. Okay, so far, good, nothing special. We could have done this easily with the string helper, but now let's do something else and add another action here. Maybe let's just copy this here. And now we want to transform this here into a smiley. So we can easily do this with string replace. So the first argument is what we want to change here is our smiley. We want to change this to a real emoji and we're looking for this inside this string here. And then again, we're returning. Let's refresh this and you can see this is working as well. And I hope you already get to see the points. We have different actions here. In this case, closures that we want to run on this initial data. Okay, I hope you already get the point here, but of course, yeah, this is a very simplified example and we maybe could have done the same with the string helper, which also works well in Laravel. So let's take a look at a real example from a real Laravel application. So I have here this little shop created for us with some deals here, with some products that you can purchase and we have some filters here on the side, like a search. If I currently try to search for a set, for example, we see the filter here, but nothing here has really changed only that we now have inside our URL this new parameter called search. Okay, but we don't do anything with this yet, so let's change this. And we do this inside our controller where we currently just reply all of our items, which of course we don't want to do. Okay, what can we do about this? First, we need to make sure that we get the request. This is an Illuminate HTTP request here. And by the way, using this here is auto-resolving something that I showed you in my last video about the service container. So the link should be up here somewhere as well for you. Okay, so what do we do now? We want to first check if the request has a specific URL parameter, which is called search, which you've seen on the URL. Okay, and if this is given, what do we want to do? Let's maybe here, let's create an items query. 
And this is now what we're going to modify. So if our search parameter is given, we want to use a were like method, which was also introduced this year. And we want to search the name field, which is the name of our product. And we get the search from the request here again. And let's close this. Okay, and the only thing left here, instead of returning all of them, we're using our items query and we're just calling the get method to run this query and get the items that we want. So back here, let's refresh and you can already see this looks like it's working. Let's search for something else like this holder. And you can see we have diff three different ones. So this also works. Cool, so far so good. What about our categories? That's basically the same. Let's just copy this here. And then for the search, we're just going to change this to category. And here we're just using a where clause and we're just providing our category. I think this should be enough. Let's try this out. Let's search for organization. Not working yet. Let's see what I did wrong here. Oh yeah, of course this needs to be category as well. Let's run this again, organization. Yeah, here we go, this looks good. Here are the categories. Let's try office now. Yeah, this also works. Okay, so far so good. And last thing here, I want to also show you the best deals, which of course is very important for a shop. So let's copy this and let's change this to best deal. Is it also called best deal in the database for the item? I think so. And here we're just going to provide true. All right, let's check this out. And yeah, fair enough, this is now also working. So we have very simply implemented our filters for this little search and it doesn't look too bad, but you can see this gets a little bit more complicated as we go. And often the filters are not as easy as just calling a specific item on the model itself. There could be a lot more code about this. Okay, what are ways we can clean this up? First idea, what we could do is we could use the when method on the query itself. Let me just show you what this looks like. And here is what this would look like. We are using here this when conditional method on the query. So when we have the search, then we add this. When we have the category, we add this, which is, yeah, which also works. Is it cleaner as before? I think you have to decide for yourself. I think there are pros and cons about this. So yeah, I think it's a good idea now to take a look how the pipeline pattern could help us here. So again, let's start from scratch here. Let's get rid of all of this. And the way we're going to start is we want to get all of our items at the end. And then we call the pipeline pattern and we're going to send through our query again. Okay, next we're going to send it through our pipes here and let's create here available and let's do this at the above. And at the end, of course, we're just going to provide here directly the items because here what we want to do at the end, we want to return again. And then let's just call the get method on what we get returned, which is the query again, which we are going to run here at this point. Okay, but more interesting, what are our pipes here? So again, this is an array of our actions, but here I don't want to use closures again because this can get quite messy. So here's a good idea now to use different classes. Okay, let's create our first one here. Mm, I want to create here a new directory called filters. All right, and let's create here a new class, call it search filter. All right, we will have here a constructor which will receive the value that we want to check. So in our case, this should be a string and let's just call it value. And then we're going to work here with an invocable method or you could also use a handle method. Both would work with um, pipelines and level. So and inside this method, we're going to receive also what we would receive in our closures. So first we have our builder, which is the eloquent builder. Let's call this query again. And the second argument is the next task. All right, and now we do the same as before. For this, we want to use the where like method. So we're calling where like again on the name field of our item. And then we want to check if this value is inside the name. And next we're going to return next again with the now modified query. Okay, does this work? Let's try this out. I think we will have one issue and we do. First, um, it looks like I've chosen the wrong pipeline class. Let's see what I've chosen. Yeah, I've chosen the routing one. Let's check for the facade again. 
Okay, good. Let's search for something. Like, oh, that's a bad one because we have not no items like this. Let's search for set again. And no, this is not working yet because we haven't added it yet to our pipes. So that's what we need to do. So let's create here a new search filter and we're going to provide our search parameter from the URL. Okay, let's try this out. This looks to be working. We have, we were searching for set and we only get sets back. But if we clear this out, now we will see an issue because now our value is not a string anymore. It's null. So this is something that we have to deal with. If we don't have set search, this will be null. So this means this is failing here. But now we have an issue that we also have to check here if we really have a string. So if we don't have one, our value here, what do we want to do? We want to early return here. So let's return next with our query. Okay, so this is important if our value is null because then it could we could end up with some wrong results here. Okay, let's check this out. The default page is still working. Let's search for set. Okay, this is also working. Perfect. So back in our controller, we can see now we have our pipeline here where we send the query through our pipes here and then get the result. And currently we only have one of them. But of course, in the end, we want to create files here for all the others. So I'll do this very quickly right now, which now looks something like this. We have now dedicated filter for the search for the category in the Bastille and all those filters look very much the same like the first one, just a little bit different. And back here, we should still have a working search. Yes, we do. Let's try out our category organization looks good. And the best deals, this should also work perfect. And it does. And now we have this new controller here where we have at the beginning our pipes so where we immediately see what's going out on by just seeing which filters we are using, but we're not showing how these are working because this is some kind of implementation that we're not interested in this controller. If we really need to know how this works, we can find this inside our filter, which I really like because yeah, our concerns are now a little bit more separated. Another thing that's very cool about the pipeline pattern is that you can define the order with the pipes. So if you want to start with the category filter or put it at the end, this would work as well. In our case here, it doesn't matter, but there are a lot of use cases for the pipeline pattern where it makes sense to define the exact order, which is really a cool feature of the pipeline pattern as well. Again, now we also have those dedicated filter classes now, which are good because we could reuse them. Maybe we have some search somewhere else where we need them as well, or we can also yeah, test them separately, which is also a good idea. Okay, so there is only one more thing that I like to show you. So in Laravel, if you search for the kernel class, HTTP kernel class inside the foundation namespace, and if you search here for a method send request through the router, let's take a look what we have here. Here is a pipeline which Laravel uses itself. So what's happening here is that we get the request. By the way, this is happening with every request coming into our application, we send the request to the pipeline, and then we have here some middlewares that are running. Let me show you, let's just dump this out. This is this middleware. All right, let's refresh. And here we have those middlewares. So what do we have here? Invoke deferred callbacks, trust proxies, handle the course, um, prevent request during maintenance, validate post size. So a lot of things that are running on the request itself and the pipeline pattern is the perfect pattern for this use case. So you can see Laravel uses this pattern as well and this is not the only place. Yeah, and again, this is the pipeline pattern. It makes sense if you have an initial data and want to run some specific actions on this where you get a good overview of what's going on without showing how we do something like filtering which again is not what we want to show here. We want to give the user, the developer, a good overview of what we are doing. And the pipeline pattern is very good for this and also helps you to better manage this because it's also great here that we can just add a new filter here, remove one without changing any of the other code, which is really nice for yeah, maintaining your code base. So this is the example that I wanted to show you today and I hope it really helped you to give you some more ideas for the pipeline patterns and you can get really creative with this pattern. So there are a lot of cool, nice examples out there. So yeah, check them out what the world does with this pattern. I really like this one. 
The next time your code gets a bit messy, you should be able to see now if the pipeline pattern could be a good solution for you. It's a true level jam and you are too if you hit the like button. Smash it if you like the video. Thank you very much and please tell me about your use cases for pipelines in the comments below. Have fun. Bye.